Oh, hey, good morning, family. Oh, no, I don't have a delivery today. I'm here for service. My name is Roy Johns, and welcome to Mount Calvary. I think service is about to start, so why don't you come on and join me? Come on, let's go. Good morning. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. I am Reverend Barry Moultrie, and we are the Mount Calvary Baptist Church family. We are so excited, and we thank God that you chose to join us in worship this morning. Today is a special day in the life of the church. We celebrate the Lord's Supper each third Sunday as we approach the end of our worship service. If you've not already prepared your communion supplies, please be sure to get them ready before the end of the service. All you need is to prepare sufficient bread and juice for the believers that will be joining you. Please, don't get concerned if you, don't, uh, if you didn't come and pick up communion supplies from the church. Your bread and juice from home will serve the purpose nicely as we ask God to bless all of the elements that we use during this Lord's Supper celebration. Let me remind you that it really is not the elements that makes communion special. It's the spirit of Christ living inside each of you, each of us, that allows us to commune one with the other together with Christ. We pray that something said, sung, or done during this time of worship will be a blessing to each of you.
The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof, the world and they that dwell therein. Lift up your heads, O ye gates, even lift them up, ye everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in. Who is the King of glory? The Lord of hosts, the Lord strong and mighty, the Lord mighty in battle. He, he is the King of glory. Let us pray. O great King, our Lord, our Father, our Savior, how we do thank you, O God, for this day, a day that was not promised to us, God, but yet you watched over us while we slept last night. You allowed us to awaken and arise this morning with a reasonable portion of our health and strength and in our right minds, oh God. We awaken to find food in the cupboard and clothes to go on our back, a roof over our head. God, you're just so good to us and we thank you. We thank you, God, for all that you've done, but most importantly, God, we thank you for your son, that you loved us so much that you gave him for us in the pardon of our sins. We pray, God, that you would use this time that we spend together to anoint and bless your people. Help us, O oh God, to worship you today in spirit and in truth. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Good morning. I'm Deacon Robert Morrison, and I'll read this morning scripture. Our scripture will be found in the book of Hebrews. Chapter 11, verse 1. That's the book of Hebrews, chapter 11, verse 1. I'll be reading the King James Version. It reads as follows. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. I read for you Hebrews, chapter 11, verse 1. May God add a blessing to those that hear and do his work. What shall I render to the Lord for all his benefits to me? I will lift up the cup of salvation and call on the name of the Lord. I will pay my vows to the Lord in the presence of all his people. We want to acknowledge all of your many gifts and all of your giving. We know that there are lots of demands for your money. So we don't take it for granted that you consider sharing your gifts to God through this branch of Zion. We thank God for each of you, for each and every gift and each and every desire to give. We pray that God will bless you all richly, not as we deserve, but according to his riches and glory. Good and gracious God, our Father, we thank you, O oh God, for how you have blessed us how you have provided for us and nurtured us. God, we know that everything that we have belongs to you. We have earned nothing, we deserve nothing, God, but you stole so graciously. Pour out your blessings upon us. You heap them on us, oh God, and we thank you for that. So God, as we give back to you just a small portion of that, we pray that you would receive it, that you would bless it, multiply it and use it for the building of your kingdom. In Jesus' name, amen. Mount Calvary. Remember back in the day when they would start playing one of those old great hymns of the church and the deacon would come out and kneel down before the altar and begin to pray, stirring souls until everybody got happy. Our altar prayer this morning will be led by Deacon Audrey Hankinson. And as she prepares to come forward, let me share with you the prayer list for this week. Miss Rosalind Comer is Miss Wanda Davis's cousin. We also have Mr. Clyde Davis, who is uh, Brother Elvis Davis's brother. Mr. and Mr. James and Miss Marlene Genus and Miss Lachelle Hill. They are friends of Sister Carolyn Chase. We have. Miss Vionia Gilbert and Miss Levitris Thomas, who are the sister and niece of Miss Sherry Isom. Richard Miller is the brother of one of our bingo players on Friday night, Miss Angela Taylor in Delaware. 
and Miss Phyllis Plitt, who works here at the church to help keep our facility clean and safe. I want to also ask that you pray for Deaconess Penny Newsom and her sister Deacon Eleanor Crocker and their caregiver, Felicia Waller. We have Sister Sherry Isom, Deacon John Snowdy, and Miss Sharon Anthaniel, all that have requested prayer. We have many others that are going through things and have asked for prayer, but not to be placed on the prayer list. So Mount Calvary, as you pray for these, you can call them by name, but also ask God to see about the rest of your church family. This is a tough time for many, many people, and they need the love and touch of their Heavenly Father. There are many people also suffering the loss of loved ones, and it's especially painful when you can't celebrate their lives in a way that seems fitting and proper to you. In addition to those who have lost loved ones during this time, we ask that you pray for Miss Katrina Criswell, her daughter, Corinthia Hemsley, uh, Miss Criswell's brother and Corinthia's uncle, Mr. James Acker, passed away and was laid to rest just a couple of weeks ago. And we were just informed that Miss Gwen Brown lost her sister, Miss Charlotte L. Moore of, Sicker, of Sicklerville, New Jersey. Uh, Miss Moore was also the aunt of Deacon Cletus and Ms. Robin Kennedy, uh, the great aunt of Nina Kennedy. And just continue to pray for all of those who have lost loved ones. Deacon Hankinson, if you could please now come and lead us in this time of prayer. Good morning, everyone. I'm Deacon Audrey Hankinson. The Lord is in his holy temple. Let all the earth keep silent before him. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. Let us rejoice and praise his name. May we pray. Oh, Lord, our Lord, our Heavenly Father, we come before you this morning. We praise you, Lord, because of your mercies and your goodness to us every day. You wake us up each morning in reasonably good health with a sound body and mind. You allow us the freedom to go about our daily activities of walking and taking care of our daily needs. We come, Lord, because you are our Holy Father. You are our friend when we are friendless. You are a doctor when we need the physical the mental, the health care. Lord, you have blessed us and you have carried us this far. And we praise you for all that you have done for us. So now, Lord, we just come confessing to you that we have sinned. We have done things we should not have done. We said things we shouldn't have said. Lord, we know that over this past week, we have been jubilant. We have been overjoyed because you heard our prayers for a new leader. And we are so happy to have the new administration that will come in our country. And although we know that it was wrong. Some of us may have said things we shouldn't have said. 
So Lord, we come asking your forgiveness because we have been taught that we should love everybody. We should love our enemies and those who have done wrong to us. So Lord, we know that in your word you said, vengeance is mine, I will repay. So Lord, we know that you had control of all that went on and that you are the one who gets the praise and the honor. And we thank you, Lord, for what you have done for our country. We come to thank you also, dear Lord, for our church, for our administration, for those who have kept this church moving forward throughout this pandemic. We thank you for giving them the strength, the knowledge, and the ability to carry on and do the work that should be done. Even though we are not here physically, we have been here virtually in many respects. We have been able to carry on all the different meetings. We have been able to have our weekly prayer and praise service. We have just functioned, Lord, the way we would have done ordinarily. So we thank you that you have given us this time. We thank you for volunteers who have come out on a weekly basis, giving food to those who were in need. We thank you for what you did for our historically black college there. We thank you for the workers who spent countless hours doing all that they needed to do so that this fair, this virtual fair, this first time virtual fair would be a success. And we know, dear Lord, that you bless those who were able to get it done. We thank you, Lord, for the longevity of this fair. It's been over, it's been 10 years and you allowed us to continue it. Lord, we ask that you bless our families with your love and protection from harm. Give us grace to forgive, strength to overcome the difficulties we face as we navigate through this pandemic and keep us together. When the world tries to pull us apart, you're there for us. Bless our children and their parents as they also have to make adjustments in child care, virtual versus in school education, and all the other things that go with family needs. Heavenly Father, we lift up all those who are facing various illnesses. Give them the hope and the courage they need today and every day. Comfort their pain, calm their fears, and surround them with your peace. We thank you, Lord, for the doctors, the nurses, and the caretakers. Bless them with patience, knowledge, and skills to take care of those they serve. We also pray, Lord, for those non-medical workers who do the cleaning, sanitizing, and all the other menial jobs that are necessary for a safe environment. Lord, we thank you that you have been in our lives, that you have taken us this far along. We've been in this pandemic for more than eight months. Some people have been alone in, at their homes. They have 
miss the comfort of being with others. But Lord, we know that this is not going to last much longer because we have been hearing about the possibility of a vaccine. So Lord, we know that things are going to get better. We know also that even though there have been talk of COVID-19 on the rise again, but Lord, you are in control of when this will end. So we ask that you give us the patience we need to wait on you because your word tells us to wait on you, to be of good courage because you will strengthen our hearts. So Lord, as we think about how things are going to be, we pray that you would just continue to be with us, go with us, give us the endurance to keep on and see what the end will be. We thank you for all that you've done. We thank you for all that you're going to do. We praise you, Lord. We love you. And we ask all of this in Jesus' name. Amen.
I can feel it. I feel your spirit, yes, Lord. I feel your presence in this place. I feel it right I now. I feel it. Feel it. I can feel your presence, Lord. Feel your sweet, sweet presence, Lord. I can feel it. Oh, 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 I feel you, Lord. I feel you, Lord. Feel your spirit. Feel your spirit. Feel your spirit. Feel your spirit, Lord. I feel your presence, Lord. Your sweet presence, your sweet presence, I feel your presence, Lord. I can feel. Fall on me, Lord. Fall on us. Fall on us, Lord. Fall on us. Fall on us. Oh, I can Fall on us, Lord. Oh, 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 Lord, Lord. Your presence is. I feel it, Lord. I feel your presence. I feel your spirit. Feel your spirit. I feel your spirit. Good morning, Mount Calvary. My name is Reverend Anthony Mumford. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. I am so glad for the opportunity to be able to break the bread of life one more time. Shall we pray? God, as I stand before your people, I pray that you increase as I decrease so they will not be impressed by me but blessed by you because they will see more of you and less of me. Mount Calvary, I believe this sermon series may be coming to an end. You heard the reading of Hebrews 11 and 1, now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. I'm going to run through my five sermons. This is the sixth. The first sermon was now faith. It's never over with faith. We just haven't seen it yet. We talked about the nowness of life and faith. My second sermon, I was trying to put a little shock value in the sermon. So God gave me the sermon title, Substance User and Substance Abuser. The pondering point of the sermon, unlike the song, was for us to meditate and medicate on this thought. Don't knock him until you try him. Substance users depend on. Substance abusers overindulge. My third message was called hope, which is heaven's opportunity to penetrate earth. And we talked about that God is trying to tell us something. We discussed how hope is produced, what hope looks like, and what hope itself produces. By the time sermon number four came along, COVID had a firm grip on the county. The Lord gave me, it's a family affair. Family matters to God. The world had a front row seat to see what had been getting swept under the rug for centuries. What God had put on my heart was the one thing COVID-19 had done was slow the country down long enough to show the human race just how inhumane it had become. We the people had gone from bad to worse. The pandemic had panned the light into the darkness 
and we could see that we the people had become desensitized and inhuman to one another on so many levels. Whether we like it or not, it's a family affair. We talked about faith is about the Father, substance is about the Son, and our hope is about the Holy Spirit. Family matters to God. Sermon number five was called Hindsight is 2020. If we only knew then what we know now, the nation's posture should be one of prayer. My prayer was that the present moment prove that God is good and his mercy is everlasting. God is still expecting us to meet the moment. Not even the pandemic can prevent the promises of God from coming to pass. You know the saying, the devil is in the details, but forewarned is forearmed. The fact-finding fingerprints of Hebrews 11 and 1 was that the Father's fingerprints can only be seen through the eyes of faith. And finally, letting the fact-finders know that there is a chair at the table with your name on it. All God wants to know, are you going to be there? Say you're going to be there at the table. With all of that said, I've been able to exhale. This is where we find ourselves in the text this morning, one more time. With a spin off of the title that's new and improved. Hindsight is 2020, 2.0. If we know better, we ought to do better. And what do we know? Let me give a shout out to Reverend Coles for pointing out the parable that I used in my last preaching moment. Let me remind some and inform others, without faith, failure becomes an option. Without faith, failure becomes an option. Faith goes beyond our so-called failures. Faith even goes beyond our faults. Faith puts us in fellowship with the Father. Hebrews 11 and 6 says, without faith, it is impossible to please God. Yes, if we are not willing to tap in to the faith that the Father is offering, we will eventually tap out. Yes, the Bible says faith without works is dead. I believe the pandemic has shown us that what's popular isn't always prudent. Getting followers on IG, that's Instagram, is not the same as following the I am that I am. Tweeting on Twitter doesn't necessarily mean you have something to say either. The Bible says in Galatians 2 and 6, those who are considered to be important does not change the word of God. Understand, it doesn't matter if they are or we are important or not. To God, everyone is the same. Speaking of the word of God, we have toted it and we have quoted it. But the pandemic, I believe, has really given us a chance to live it out, to live out all of that toting and quoting that we have been doing. Without faith, failure becomes an option. James 2 and 6 says the body without the spirit is dead. So faith without works is also dead. If we know better, we ought to do better. Hindsight is 2020, 2.0. What I'm wondering is have we been taking God's grace for granted? Let me share a Mumfordism with you. If we've been taking God's grace for granted, I call that greasy grace. Romans 6 and 1 and 2 says, what shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? God forbid. Let me mumphonize that verse for you. I th if we think we can continue doing wrong and believe that God is going to grant us more and more grace, I think we are rudely mistaken. I'm also wondering if we have been lazy with God's love. Another Mumfordism for you. I call that sloppy 
agape. What I have noticed about sloppy agape, sloppy agape doesn't want any parts of 1 Corinthians 13 where it says, love suffers long and is kind. Love does not envy. Love does not parade itself. It is not puffed up. Does not behave rudely. Does not seek its own. Is not provoked. Thinks no evil. Does not rejoice in iniquity. But rejoices in the truth. Bearing all things. Believing all things. Hoping all things and enduring all things. Love never fails. You see, sloppy agape is not going to cut the mustard. If we know better, we ought to do better. Hindsight is 2020, 2.0. God cannot bless who we pretend to be. God really doesn't recognize that you anyway. So be who God called you to be. I figure it's best you hear it from someone who loves you because I love you. I love you with the love of the Lord. As the saying goes, the old military additive in the army, be all you can be because everyone else is taken anyway. If we had been practicing greasy grace and sloppy agape, let's stop being a pretender and start being a contender. The book of Jude tells us to contend for the faith. There is no time like the present, to let go and let God. What we confess, the blood can cover. What we choose to lose, God is able to forget. The Bible says that we confess our sins. He is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Not some, but all unrighteousness. There is a big difference between clean and cleanse. Here's a hint. What can wash away our sins? Nothing but the blood. In this season of seeking the Savior for solutions to our situations, the nation's posture of prayer is going to pay off in ways we haven't even seen yet. How can I say that? Easy peasy wheezy. The Bible says that I have not heard, nor ear heard, nor have entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for those who love him. Mount Calvary, our prayers of the past have proven once again in this present moment that God is good and his mercy is everlasting and his truth endures to all generations. As we are preparing to get back to the new normal of life, what have we learned about this new life we now have to get used to living in this soon-to-be post-pandemic paradigm period? The pandemic has posed two potential problems for us. Number one, who are we as God's people? And number two, is God still who he said he was? Who are we as God's people? I believe this season in the body of Christ has shown us that what we thought was important turns out not to be as important as we thought. So where do we go from here? Well, I'm so glad that you asked. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians 8 and 10, I beseech you, Mount Calvary, by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that we all speak the same thing, and that there be no division among us, but that we be perfectly joined together in the same mind and in the same judgment. God is expecting us to continue to meet the moment. Even though the method has changed, the message is still the same. God needs for us to make the moment matter. Question two, is God still who he said he is? The short answer is yes. The long answer, Mount Calvary. We can recall to our minds, therefore, we have hope. It is of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed. 
Because his compassions fail not, they are new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness. The Lord is our portion, saith our soul. Therefore, we will hope in him. The Lord is good unto them that wait for him. To the souls that seek him, it is good for us, Mount Calvary, that we should both hope and quietly wait for the salvation of the Lord. I mentioned a minute ago, where do we go from here? Mount Calvary, as we go to the place where the pandemic has forced us to go, even though we have free access to this place, even though we can go to this place as a last resort, even though this place should be our first response. And just where is this place? Well, uh, I'm so glad uh, that you ask. Uh, keeping in mind, Mount Calvary, that hindsight is 2020, 2.0. If we know better, we ought to do better. Without faith, failure becomes an option. The psalmist says it this way. He that dwells uh, in the secret place of the Most High shall abide uh, under the shadow uh, of the Almighty because God uh, is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. In God is our salvation and our glory, the rock of our strength and our strength and the rock of our strength and our refuge is in God. Mount Calvary, I believe I've told you what I think God told me to tell you. As I prepare to bring this message down to where the ground has been graded uh, by grace and mercy uh, is waiting to meet us at the foot of the cross. Let me, uh, if you will, mumphronize the last few moments of this message. Let me see if I can seam uh, this series together and make this a cohesive uh, Baptist close. This series of six sermons have all come from Hebrews uh, 11 and 1. Now faith is the substance of things hopeful, the evidence of things uh, not seen. Now faith means it's never uh, over with faith. Uh, you just haven't seen it yet. The nowness of life, it's to be a substance a user and not a substance abuser. Don't knock him uh, until you try him. Unlike the song, uh, you can meditate uh, and medicate uh, on JC. And I'm not talking about uh, J. Coles, but Jesus Christ. Because uh, you may be uh, someone's uh, only hope. Uh, heaven's uh, opportunity to penetrate earth. Uh, I stop by to tell you that God uh, is uh, trying to tell you something. Uh, God is saying uh, we are all uh, in this thing together. If if family is your thing, because it is God's thing, it's a family affair, and family uh, matters to God. God sent his whole family to seek after you uh, and I. Faith is about the Father. Substance uh, is about the Son. And our hope is all about the Holy Spirit. When we look in the rearview mirror, you will see that hindsight uh, is uh, 2020. If we only knew then uh, what uh, we know now, the fact-finding folks uh, who are looking for the Father's fingerprints uh, in Hebrews 11 and 1, they can only be seen uh, through the eyes of faith. Uh, Shirley Chisholm uh, once said, if they don't give you a seat at the table, uh, bring a folding chair. You don't have to worry because there, there is a chair uh, at the table uh, with your name on it. Uh, all you have to do is uh, contact uh, God uh, and you do that uh, through prayer. Uh, and all God wants to know, uh, are you going to be there? Will you be there at the table? 
For God has so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish, but have a everlasting life. God has sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world uh, through him uh, might be saved. Uh, hindsight is 2020 20, uh, 2.0. Without faith, uh, failure becomes an option. If we know better, uh, we ought to do better. And uh, what I know is I'm not uh, what I ought to be, uh, but I'm sure not uh, what I used to be. Uh, when I look at my hands, uh, my hands uh, look new. Uh, when I looked at my feet, uh, they uh, did too. Uh, I put my hands uh, to the gospel plow, uh, and I've learned uh, I wouldn't take nothing uh, for my journey uh, about right now. Uh, if you don't believe uh, that I've uh, been redeemed, uh, all I ask you to do is come follow me uh, down uh, to the Jordan stream. Uh, when I got to the Jordan stream, uh, I stepped down uh, in the water. The water was cold. Uh, it chilled uh, my body, but it didn't chill uh, my soul. Uh, if you uh, feel like uh, you're uh, in a valley today, uh, all uh, you have to do is just fall down uh, on uh, your knees uh, and pray. Uh, and when you pray, uh, I believe uh, by faith, uh, you'll know uh, you're not there uh, to stay. Uh, your soul uh, will get happy and you'll uh, be on your way uh, to a much uh, better day. Just as the Lord uh, to come into your life uh, and he will uh, make uh, everything uh, all right. Uh, so uh, hindsight is 2020, uh, 2.0. Uh, if we know better, then we ought to do better. Without faith, failure becomes an option. So Mount Calvary, as we come down from this place, but never leave his presence, God is always on our side. And we need to be a witness for him. To be a witness, you have to be a part of the family. So if you don't know him, I suggest that you get to know him. Because he may not be able to change your life, but what I do know, my hands are new and my feet are too because he changed the rest of my life. And once you put your hands to the gospel plow, you'll find out too that you wouldn't give nothing for the journey that you're on right now. Again, Mount Calvary, may God bless you and may the Lord shine upon you. And just remember, hindsight is 2020, 2.0. If we know better, we are to do better. Without faith, failure becomes an option. Thank you. If there's anyone that has heard the word that has just been said and you're thinking about that you might want to step down in the water even though the water is a little chilly and it'll chill your body but not your soul I invite you to do just that because God is calling you right now because God is saying hindsight is 2020. If you know better, then you ought to do better. And you have no excuse now because you know better. Because I have just told you that God is calling you. God wants you. Just like old Uncle Sam used to say, I want you. If you want to be a part of God's family, it's very easy and very simple. You can come through this local body right here. You can come by baptism. That's the chilly water part. 
or you can come by Christian experience. You already know the Lord. You just don't have a place to worship, I guess, virtually now. Or you can come by restoration, that God has spoken to you and you're deciding to come back to him. Or you can come by watch care. That's because you're here in the area and while you're here, you want someone to look over you. We call it a covering and we'll cover you while you're here. You can text, save me, S-A-V-E-M-E -E, to 94090. And someone from our intake team will contact you to usher you in to the Lord's family. If you heard the word and you want someone to talk to far as prayer, you want someone to pray for you, well, here at Mount Calvary, we can do that also. All you have to do is text MC BC, pray for me. M-C-B-C-P-R-A-Y, the number four, M-E. Pray for me to 94090. And someone from our intercessory team will contact you and pray with you and see how we here at Mount Calvary can be of service to you as the Lord sees fit. And if you just want someone to talk to because of what you have heard today about hindsight is 2020. If we know better, then you ought to do better. Without faith, failure becomes an option, and you don't want that option. And you need someone to talk to. Text, talk to me, T-A-L-K-T-O-M-E. Talk to me all together to 94090. And someone from our counseling ministry will be glad to talk to you see how God may increase your faith. Again, we thank you for the opportunity. Amen. Mount Calvary, it's now time for us to share in our church covenant. Even though we are apart, we can still share in the church covenant together. Having been led, as we believe, by the Spirit of God, to receive the Lord Jesus Christ as our Savior. And on the profession of our faith, having been baptized in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. We do now, in the presence of God, angels, and this assembly, most solemnly and joyfully enter into covenant with one another as one body in Christ. We engage, therefore, by the aid of the Holy Spirit, to walk together in Christian love, to strive for the advancement of this church in knowledge, holiness, and comfort. And promote its prosperities and spiritualities to sustain its worship, ordinances, discipline, and doctrines. To contribute cheerfully and regularly to the support of the ministry, the expenses of the church, the relief of the poor, and the spread of the gospel through all nations. We also engage to maintain family and secret devotions, to religiously educate our children, to seek the salvation of our kindred and acquaintances. To walk circumspectly in the world, to be just in our dealings, faithful in our engagements, and exemplary in our deportment. To avoid all tattling, backbiting, and excessive anger to abstain from the sale and use of intoxicating drinks as a beverage and to be zealous in our efforts to advance the kingdom of our savior we further engage to watch over each other in brotherly love to remember each other in prayer to aid each other in sickness and distress to cultivate christian sympathy in feeling and courtesy in speech to be slow to take offense, but always ready for reconciliation and mindful of the rules of our Savior to secure it without delay. We moreover engage that when we remove from this place, we will as soon as possible unite with some other church where we can carry out the spirit of this covenant 
and the principles of God's word. Now the God of peace that brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus, that great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the everlasting covenant, make you perfect in every good work to do his will, working in you that which is well-pleasing in his sight through Jesus Christ, to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. We are grateful to God for the privilege that he has given us as his children to come together at his table and to partake in this act of Holy Communion. We in the Baptist Church believe that all who have confessed Christ as their Lord and Savior ought to and are invited to participate in this, the Lord's Supper. We want you to know that there is no magic in the supplies or the elements that you use or where you get them from. You can have the communion cups picked up from the church here or you could have a loaf of fresh baked bread or a slice of light bread as we used to call it at home. It doesn't matter if you use grape juice, cranberry juice, apple juice, or even water. These emblems represent the body of Jesus given willingly and lovingly for the remission of our sins, yours and mine. This cup represents the shed blood of Jesus, his willingness to suffer for you and for me, that we could be reconciled to the Father. As we partake of the Lord's Supper, just know that this all represents and reminds us of the great love and sacrifice that was given for us. There is no greater love than the willingness of the Father giving his son's life and the son Jesus willingly laying down his life for you and for me. So what we do now in celebrating this Lord's Supper, we do in remembrance of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And as we come together even virtually, to this Lord's table, let us come with a spirit of humility and penitence. And when the hour had come, Jesus sat down and his 12 apostles with him. He took the bread, he broke it, gave it to them and said, take, eat, this is my body, which was given for you. Then he took the cup, gave thanks, gave it to them saying, drink ye all of it for this is my blood of the new covenant which was shed for the remission of your sins. He said, oh, how I long to eat this supper with you before I suffer. For I will no more drink of the fruit of the vine until that day I drink it new with you in my father's kingdom. We cannot bless these emblems, but we can ask God's blessings upon them. So I asked Reverend Mumford to ask God's blessings upon these emblems here and those in your homes. Heavenly Fathers, once more again, we come before your throne, Lord, thanking you for another opportunity to be able to gather in your name. God, we want to thank you for what your son did on the cross that gave us access to be able to come to your table. So God, we ask now that you bless the emblems, bless the bread, Bless the cup, bless us individually as we gather one with another, one with another in communion with you. We ask this in your son's name and for his sake, and we all say, amen. This bread represents the body of our Lord Jesus Christ. And this cup represents the redemptive blood of Christ shed for you and for me. Drink ye all of it. And when they were finished, they sang a hymn, went out to the Mount of Olives, Mount Calvary. Go out and love on each other. Show love and share love. Have a great day and God bless you.